Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. M-I-K-E-K-O-L-L-I-N.com. This is part two to the Narcissist Death Triangle, the final discard. All right, so sorry, I didn't mean to cut that off. So number one, they have to get you out. They have to get you in your ego and looking for what's called external love, which isn't love. That's not healthy love. That's toxic love. And and now everything becomes toxic. So the second thing they do is they start to stab you. They hurt you. They sting you is really the right word. So now you're up here. You don't want to go back down into your emotions because it hurts. And every time you get out, it hurts. So now you're stuck here. And now you're dependent on the narcissist to love you, to compliment you, to make you feel good about yourself. Because now you can't do it yourself. And that's ego compliments and love. That's not real love. Okay. That's why a lot of people tell you like, Hey, that's not love. And you're like, what are you talking about? No one's ever explained it like that. Okay. It gets a little worse. Okay. So that, so when they test you and they can tell that you won't go back down anymore, that's when you get your first smirk and they're going to be like, Hmm, got him stuck now. Right. They got you trapped. They got you trapped up here. Now, at this point, that mirror, mirror on the wall that will tell you whatever you want to hear now starts to punish you. It tells you that you're ugly, your haircut doesn't look good, I don't like the way you dress, I don't like the friends you hang out with, why would you say something like that? And then all the flying monkeys start to come in and start to do the same thing. It could be just a look, like you might be eating some food that's not approved of by the group because they're on a certain special keto diet, right? And they'll, they'll give you that evil look. Like and it's just A lot of this stuff is very slick, it's very smooth, right? But it still fucking hurts, right? The worst part is you're going to go to one of the flying monkeys or one of the people in the group and say, oh, so-and-so has been mean to me. Like, and they're, now they're going to – now they're you're thinking they're going to give you sympathy. Oh, hell no. Now they're going to dig in more. Oh, well, you know, I heard you this and I heard you that. So-and-so said this about you. And then the other flying monkey goes, yeah, it's true. You are like that. And now you're getting stabbed more and now you, sh- you won't go down for sure. Okay, you won't reconnect. That's the number one goal that I do when I work with people is to heal the emotional pain, to take out the toxicity, to pull the stinger out, and then drop you back down inside and reconnect you. That's been something I've been doing with people for 25 plus years. So let me wrap this up. There is, at this point, okay, so now that you're being punished, 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 and you got the evil mirror going on, right? A lot of people will be saying, well, why would you stay around someone like that? Well, here's the deal. They haven't been taken through this mirroring process, right? Even you, on a logical level, you go to your friends and family, so and so's hurting you, they're so mean. And they're like, well, then, then don't go around them no more. Why would you go back to them? And like, I know, right? And then you go back to them. That's your unconscious mind. There's one thing to, to on, a, on a logical level, understand that they're hurting you. But on an emotional level, you want you. See, here's what it is. You want this mirror. Now that you're external, you want this mirror to turn back around and to love you and do the love bombing thing because no one in the world has ever done it like that. Well, let me tell you something about the love bombing phase. They didn't love you like that. It was all a plan. It was a step-by-step process when they first met you. They studied your social history, your social media, your Instagram, your Facebook postings, what music you liked. All of that stuff was stuff they figured out about you. And they knew that you liked and they started giving what you wanted. Everybody wants that. But most people don't think, oh, I need to study the social media because that's kind of creepy, right? So you want this mirror to turn around and that's why you keep going back to them. It's not going to turn around. But but there's more. <laughs> but what they will do, because even someone who has been addicted, opened up, love bombed and hooked like a heroin addict, right? Even them, people can't just take pain, pain, pain. After a while, they're like, yeah, I'm out of here. I'm not getting anything out of this. Here's what they do to keep you around. They breadcrumb you. And and hopefully, I'm sure you've heard that phrase before. But what they do is they give you just a little bit. They might take you out to an extravagant dinner and treat you well and love you and come. And they might even love bomb you for a whole five hours, right? And they'll treat you really well. And you're like, wow. Oh, God, the nightmare's over. Oh, good. Thank God. Oh, no, the next morning it starts all over for about a month or five weeks or so. And then they might give you – maybe they might buy you your favorite T-shirt or they might buy you some chairs or something, right? That actually happened. Someone actually bought me and it was really like surprising. They were really nice chairs. They are expensive. I needed them and they showed up out of the blue. I was like, whoa, because this person 
had basically abandoned me emotionally for months. And I was like, oh, wow, I guess they're back. No, it's, it's called breadcrumbing. They do breadcrumbing to keep you going along this path so they can get their constant supply. Now, here's what happens. This is the devious part. Remember I told you your, your unconscious mind believes that the mirror is you? And you think that it's not conscious. You're not conscious of it. It's your unconscious mind. But your unconscious mind is what rules you. It's what controls you. It's what guides you. It, it's like 91 to 97% of who you are. Your conscious mind is very small. There's a difference between consciousness, which is wholeness, versus your conscious mind. That's your ego. That's when you're conscious of stuff. That's seven plus or minus two bits of information. That's very little. Your unconscious mind actually rules this. And that's what they're doing. They're getting your unconscious mind, your emotional system hooked on them. So here's what happens. You think that this mirror is you. So now that they got you up here, this is, this is the death triangle the, or the triangle of death. They get you to go external. So now you're in your ego. So they opened you up. They love bombed you. And then the ego stroked you. They got you up here. And now they're punishing you down here in your gut and your shoulder. Sorry, I'm put, put, pointing to my solar plexus, down here in your solar plexus and your gut area so you won't go back down because there's nothing but pain in there. And every time you try to go down, they stab you. They stab you, right? So you, you won't go there no more. So now you got to go external to look for love and compliments. This is the triangle. Watch this. So now you go external to them. They love you. And then you come back in your belly and your solar plexus and your heart area and it feels good. That's love bombing. So you out, feel good, out, feel good, out, feel good. So now this is, becomes your pattern. Now you look for love externally, and this is very dangerous. This is why you need to be what's called internal love from here down into your heart and your body area. That is the secret to getting out of this damn triangle. So now what happens is they turn the mirror and you go out and they punish you. You go out and they punish you. You go out and they punish you. You go out and you punish you. Now here's, here's the part. I want you to understand on an unconscious level you think that this mirror is you so you think that you think that you're bad you think that you that you think that what you said was wrong you start to think that your ideas are stupid you start to think that your goals are wrong you start to think so everything you do now now here's the here comes the epic smirk the goal is this this is the goal of destroying you a lot of you never knew what this actually was do you want to know how they know? Because you think, well, how do they know when to discard you? Like, 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 how do they know when you're destroyed? When they walk away and you are doing this unconsciously, and this pattern is now wired in your system to go external, self-punishment, external, self-punishment, pain, external, self-punishment, self pain, and you do this, uh, tr uh, the, what do I call the triangle of death? And you're going out, you go back in. You're going out, you go back in. And you're punishing yourself. At that point, they're like, my job is done here. It's time to discard. And then they throw you away like you're trash. Here's the worst part. They know that you still want the love bombing phase, the mirroring phase that you had in the very beginning. So they know that you're hooked. You're hooked like a drug addict. You, once you got the heroin in your system, you got to get some. You got to get some. They can call you back three weeks later, three months later, a year later, and guess what you're going to do? You're going to go running back to them. And that, my friends, is why so many people get into long-term relationships. They get thrown away like trash, and they will literally drop the love of their dreams. Let's say they get into a really healthy relationship. A year later, two years later, this, this narcissist comes back, and you go run into them. And I know that you've seen it if, if you haven't done it yourself, and I know that your family members or other family members have seen daughters and sons of theirs like why would you go back to that person what are you doing you're in a great relationship what's going on because you need that fix and no one gives you that fix like the heroin addict a heroin dealer so that is the triangle of death um let me see if there's something else I, that's pretty much it i mean that literally is it that's the triangle of death I can help you get out of this. Again, I am a certified NLP trainer. I'm a certified master practitioner of Ericksonian hypnosis, master practice, certified master practitioner of timeline therapy, Reiki, Huna, pranic healing, consciousness work, and a whole ton of other things. I'm really good at what I do. I've been doing it for almost 
30 years now. So if you need help, the number one goal is to break all the cords and connections to the narcissist. Then we got to break all what's called the anchors. We got to, we got to delete those. Okay. And then what we do is we reconnect everything to your happiness. So here's the, the triangle of death. Once they get you to, to ping pong back to yourself in a, in a negative triangle where you're, you know, you go external self punishment, you feel pain in your solar plexus and your heart area. That's when they smirk and they, and they laugh at you. And now it's time for them to discard you. Here's why. Because essentially you're destroyed. Now you're destroying yourself. And that's why they think it's so fucking funny. Cause now that mirror basically is stuck there in your mind. And now you're doing it to yourself. They've rewired you to punish yourself and you slowly will destroy yourself. These are, this is when you see like a beautiful young girl who's in college or something. She's got straight A's. She did well. She's a scholarship student. She's an athlete. She's done this and that. And next thing you know, when she's 25, 26 years old, she's hooked on drugs. And everyone's like, what the hell happened to Kelly? Well, someone rewired her to do the self-punishment thing on a really vicious cycle. And that makes a narcissist feel happy for some reason. It's because they're sick and twisted fucks. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not going to talk about it no more. It, it, this is, this is the epitome of what a narcissist does. And so if you're wondering like, well, how does a narcissist know when, when you, when you're destroyed? Cause that's number one goal. How do they know when it's time to discard you? It's when you're doing that self punishment thing, when they've got you rewired to attack yourself and sting yourself. Hey, this is Mike Colling at MikeColling.com. If this has strung a chord with you, hit a chord with you, if this makes a lot of sense, click subscribe, click the like button, and I'll see you in the next video.